Hello, Cooper Clover, 1972 here. Um, so as promised, I said I I would uh, do my video on my on the films I've I've watched during this week, and of course during this week I was watching horror, a lot of horror movies because of the because it's October. Um, as well, I've been watching the Saw films, but I did mention them in my last video, which was about Saw Six today, that I would also do. Um, my um, reviews or I don't know if just what I've been watching besides horror films and that's what this particular video is addressed towards it's um, so I only have two movies so maybe this will probably be a quick video uh, the first I, I, I watched them both off of a movie which is a streaming service they show it's spelled M-U-B-I um, they show independent movies, they show cult movies, they show foreign films, they show classics, and they have films, they have like 30 films each day, and they take one off each day and put another one on. Um, another streaming site that's sort of similar to Mubi um, has more films, um, has, well, Mubi can show obscure films too, but um, the the other streaming site I'm thinking about is Fandor, which I also have. And, you know, you can see places, see films from places like Iran and countries in Africa and, and in Asia, you know, um, like countries, continent like Africa and a continent like Asia. You can see all kinds of countries. I mean, uh, and just lots of cult stuff. And, you know, so basically they're sort of the same thing. It's just that... Um, Mubi has 30 films per day. They take one off, they put one on. And Fandor has just more selection, I guess. Doesn't mean they're better than the other. They're just two different ways of uh, collecting, uh, um, the collecting, watching, watching film films, you know, ways of seeing films. Um, so anyways, First film I watched off of th this week off of movies is a film called My Winnipeg, which is a place in in uh, Canada. I think it's it's uh, South Central Canada, and it's directed by a guy named Guy Madden, who who directed this film called Brand Upon the Brain, which I have I've never watched. Um, I think Brand Upon the Brain it's a Criterion. I think you can choose different kinds of narrators for each time you watch it. And I, I don't know. I have to look at it at some point. Um, it's from Canada, obviously, because Winnipeg's in Canada. And it's 2007. It, it grew tiresome very quickly on me. Um, it's a film in black and white. I don't care about the if it was black and white or color. But um, it's like a poem. And there's no plot or anything. And... I'm I'm not against poetry in films. I, I I like poetic movies, you know, j just as much. But it just seemed to um, seemed to just be caught up in its own uh, mediocrity, you know, ca caught up in like um, well, how can I, I? I like to put it in the most succinct way that I possibly can. Um, It's um, Guy Madden is the narrator, and um, he's talking about different places in, in, in Winnipeg, you know, different 
depart um, buildings, department stores, trains, and uh, ice um, amusement parks, and I think ice skating. I think ice skating, and just coldness, and saying that can't uh, it's the coldest city in the world, and um, oh, Winnipeg. I, I don't think it's a is a is a province of Canada. It's, it's a city, I believe. I, I can't remember. Is it Manitoba? Or I don't know. It's somewhere in there. I, I don't know Canadian geography awfully well. And I know, you know, like Toronto's in Ontario, Montreal's in Quebec, you know, there's this was, um, with the British Columbia, you know, but it's Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, you know, um, but he, you know, he just repeats my Winnipeg over and over again, and, and then he, then he tries to um, relive his past. Uh, he, he has people, he casts people to live like his family, and he, I think he actually takes the place where he grew up, and has the film crew come in with some furniture and actors to play the parts of his family. And I, I just didn't see the point on all the film. It, it, it just was a. It was boring after a while. It quickly became boring. Um, yeah, it, it just wear out, warts out, itself out very quickly. Um, didn't seem to have much of a point to it, you know. Uh, maybe it'd be better as a poem. I don't know. Um, and and again, you know, I can watch a film with poetry, maybe even a short film. Maybe this would work as a short film of poetry, but it just didn't work for me. Yeah, I mean, there are great films that are very mysterious, you know, if you take a razor head. I know that Vertigo has like a plot in it, but it's one of Hitch it's it's has Hitchcock's more more um, um abstract not abstract. Um um is that a word I'm looking for? Not not um Not oblivious, um, not abstract. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm holding you up, trying to think of the the word I'm I'm searching for. Ambiguous, ambiguous. It's ambiguous, but in a good way because you know other Hitchcock films are kind of wrapped themselves up. I don't know. I haven't seen Rebecca in a while, so that might be a different story. I can't remember Rebecca that well. Uh, enough of that. So to the. The, the other film I watched, which was the film I watched right after Saw 6 today, I just finished it right now. It's called, uh, and I don't know if, I must be butchering the first name, Ryuichi Sakamoto. His first name is R-Y-U-I-C-H-I, and his last name is Sakamoto, S-A-K-A-M-O-T-O. With co with a semicolon coda, and it's directed by Stephen Nomura Shibble, which is uh, N O M U R A. That's his middle name. Last name S C H I B L E. Um, from the United States, 2017. Oh, and the, the my Winnipeg is 2007. I don't know if I said that already. This particular movie. Ruji Sakamoto film. He's a he's a composer. He he's he 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 makes classical pieces and um, regular pieces of music. And he's he's been involved, I think, in a rock band. From from what I see in the the documentary, I don't I don't know the extent of the rock band. I just saw him playing, I think, in, in this band. And he scored some famous films, like he scored um, Merry Christmas, Sister Lawrence. That was directed by Nagisa Oshima and star David Bowie, and he and he directed and uh, not directed. I'm sorry, he did the music for Bertolucci's Last Emperor, and he was hired by Bertolucci again to direct, not direct. What am I talking about? To compose the score for The Sheltering Sky. I think that's the name of it with John Malkovich. Um, and according to that particular uh, film. Bertolucci, he had the score all prepared, and Bertolucci said, I want you to throw that score out and start from scratch. And so he had the musicians there, so he had to wait. He had he told them to wait 30 minutes, and he came up with a new score. 
but it's very unique, very interesting film. Um, he finds out he at the start of the movie we find out that he has he has throat cancer, and it makes him you know think about life and um, the value of life and um, whether or not he has a, enough time to compose a lot more music or whether um, his his life will end sooner than he thinks. Uh, we get to see a lot of great clips, you know, from the past of the films he worked on. We get to see a lot of the independent projects he worked on of his own, you know, like using sounds of nature, you know, recording, you know, like water and, and uh, um, trees rustling, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, um, just playing with sound. Which I think influ oh, and he scored the Revenant for Alejandro Gon Gonzalez Inarito. I that's a really good movie. I highly recommend the, the Revenant, and I think one of the cute one of the f few notes in the Revenant was inspired by him recording outside in nature. He took those sounds and then took those sounds and made them into musical notes and scored those into the revenant if i'm if i'm getting that correctly there's another great scene in it where he's uh with a band i don't know which one he is he must be one of the keyboardists um i think there's two keyboardists in the band there's a drummer there's a there's a bass player um i don't know if there's a guitarist and I think they have a Moog, synth Moog synth synth synthesizer uh, while they're playing. And I think Moogs, which were originally uh, where I first became aware of them, was w when they were used at Clocker Gorns. They were also used, I believe, in The Shining. And I guess they're like the predecessor to the the, the uh, MIDI keyboard. I have a MIDI keyboard that I use with the Garage Band. Um, mm -hmm. And it can play different instruments, but the Moog I, I, is dip, was like you put one wire on one side, um, one jack, and you take that wi the wire and you put in another jack, and it can tr it, it can it, it change it makes this va vast um, sea of uh, different noises that you can come up with, and it, different sounds noises is not the right word sounds. And it's it's really fascinating, you know. Um, this documentary I highly recommend. I, I oh, and I forgot to do these ratings again um, with my Winnipeg and Ruchi Sakamoto Coda. Um, yeah, and uh, oh, and also Sakamoto he goes to Fukushima. That's where the um, tsunami hit and the earthquake. And he finds a piano that was damaged, and he 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 makes a speech about like how instruments get out of tune, and they want to be more that that nature wants it back to the way they were before they were hand you know they were um, crafted by man to you know work for for for, for humans to play the instruments, and that nature tries to bring instruments back into the fold of nature again. I found, I found that to be an interesting comment, you know? Um, so he plays this piano and, and, um, you know, it's, it doesn't sound right, of course, because it's been in a tsunami and he's saying like, this is the way the piano wants to be heard, you know, which is kind of fascinating, I guess. No, I guess it was, yeah, it was fascinating. Um, and what else can I say about this movie? Because this, this, it just, it just blows my mind what I can, what I've seen, what I see about it. Um, how he talks about Tarkovsky and how he, how, how Tarkovsky uses sound as a, as like part of the, um, well, it sort of makes me think of Blade Runner, the, the atmosphere, um, that Tarkovsky thought sound was a very important element in making or making an environment or con constructing a a, a film. Um, I don't know if story is the right word. Film, maybe. Um, 
So, you know, I'm going on and on about this Sakamoto thing, but man, this was a really good movie. Um, so let's backpedal a second. Let me give you my rating for my Winnipeg. And now I know I'm going on long because I'm 40, 14 minutes in. Um, my Winnipeg, I would give, I think I give it two and a half stars. So I've given a marginal thumbs down because it's slightly interesting in how he hires a family to uh, re replace scenes from his past and show, show ver various locales of Winnipeg and why he wants to get out and all that. But it, it, in the end, it just doesn't work and it falls flat and it becomes tiresome. Uh, on the other hand, Ruchi Sakamoto Koda, um, I'm at least giving this four stars, probably more like, uh, I might give it four and a half, not five. Five would be a film like Lawrence Arabia, um, Citizen Kane, Touch of Evil, um, uh, um, Throne of Blood, uh, La Dolce Vita, Vertigo, Psycho, eight and a half. You know, those are the cream of the crop. Seven Samurai. You know, though, you know the, col the Colors Trilogy, White, you know, from Krzysztof Koslowski, or Polanski's Knife in the Water, but, but in Eraserhead, and, you know, some of Kubrick's movies, but, of course, you know, being me, Kubrick lover. So I'm, I'm going to give it a four and a half. I'm going to end it now. And um, I'll put up my uh, blog again, which will probably come before I end this video, I'll probably be a little before where I'm speaking now. And uh, just check out my GarageBand videos. They have, you know, guitars on them, MIDI keyboard. And, uh, yeah. And, and so this was a delight to watch the, the Sakamoto documentary. Really fascinating. Again, it expired tonight. So if, if you, if you, uh, you might not have a chance to see it by the time you see this on movie. Well, you can't, you really won't because it's all already 2.40 a.m. in the morning. And in 20 minutes, this film's going to be taken off the website. So I, I should be more aggressive with, with showing, vi show, um, talking about movies on movie if people wanted to watch them. But maybe you fi can find another way to watch it. Um, anyways, that does it. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. And I'll be back with another installment of the 31 Days of Halloween tomorrow, probably with Day 7 with Saw 7. Okay. Watch some movies. See you soon.